um Reebok C event in New York, right? This is a very interesting story because again, I've done, I'm not, sh this is probably the kind of activations that I would like to be part of, right? It's a little bit more interesting, a little bit more of a challenge. It's not the quote unquote cool brand that everyone is kind of in tune with. It's something that needs a bit of work to kind of get started. So this is, this is an article from Hype Beast, of course, as per usual. Um, it's an event for the new Reebok C that came out or that's come out recently. Um, they had a little pop-up event in New York City for the, for the shoe. The first thing that struck me first about the whole thing is that they had it in New York, right? Reebok has, for me, quintessentially been a European, specifically a UK brand. Um, I know for a long, long time um, they had that space um, just off Curtain Road, I think, that they were trying to kind of use as a kind of, you know, co-working, meeting, um, energy, marketing, uh, marketing energy sort of campus. I don't know, something to kind of like get the influences around the town to kind of like, you know, get enthusiastic about Reebok. But it never really seemed to kind of pick up any traction, right? I'm not sure if they did a collaboration with Palace because I've, I've, I'm sure those Palace kind of wankers were kind of wanting to be part of that kind of Reebok thing, right? Because they, they like wearing track suits and wearing Reeboks in order to pretend that they're perpetuating some working class um, epitaph, whatever it may be. But I, I remember that they were trying everything they could, right, to kind of make Reebok cool. They never really seemed to like hit. Then um, there were rumors that they were going to bring out the um, Reebok workouts, you know, the kind of with the icy soul, the ones that were made kind of famous by Wiley and Crazy Titch back in the day. Um, then randomly Rick Ross died wearing a pair. Then that Reebok deal kind of went flat. Then they came out kind of on the sly and the kind of the traction didn't really take anywhere. And I honestly thought that that model, that Reebok classic with the sort of red soul and the icy soul was going to be the model that was going to really kind of push them back into the cultural conversation. But it never really kind of worked out that way. So they were kind of fumbling around trying to figure out what was going to work. I guess on the performance side of things, they've got that kind of locked in place with the Met, with the Metcons or no, the Metcons. Uh, the um, what are, what what are the Reebok shoes called? It's just a bad actually a thing, you know. I don't remember what they're called. But those CrossFit shoes that Reebok make, right? They're doing quite well there. But I guess Nike are also infiltrating that scene too because they've got the Metcons that have now been you know super popular with a lot of the CrossFit athletes. So Reebok are in a bit of a tricky situation. Um, hasn't been quite worked out for them in Europe, although they have like a, you know recurring customers. They have people that are loyal to a brand that buy all the time. You only have to go to parts of South London where all the arts universities are to see kids um, wearing Reebok classics all day, every day, right? White Reebok classics with white socks, black jeans. It's a standard kind of hipster art student kind of motif, which I'm surprised they haven't really kind of tapped into. But again, maybe there's something coming up in there in the future. You see a lot of Goldsmith students uh, wearing those kind of stuff, like a lot of the RCA students are wearing that kind of stuff. So again really popular in that scene um so i guess because of that they decided to then kind of probably seek other ventures and kind of go around the world and see that kind of thing right and what i saw happening first is that they brought back this reebok c model which i'm not really familiar with previously right i'm not really a reebok aficionado i don't really know too much about them like i said before i grew up in a working class um a working class environment a working class neighborhood with some very questionable characters who support some very questionable politics and most of those people used to wear Reebok Classic. So for me, Reebok Classic has a bit of a tainted smell towards it, right? You know, you don't have to get rushed certain times by a group of skinners wearing Reebok Classic to think, you know, I'm never going to wear that shoe again. But my personal experience aside, what I've noticed is that outside of the world, everyone kind of sees it differently, right? And they decided to kind of reissue this model called the Reebok C. Number one, the first time I saw it was this colorway here, right? I'm going to get up on here on screen for you guys to see. So I saw this colorway here first right so interesting way to roll out a product they brought back this kind of og colorway it's sort of like all white with kind of green um details right green on the reebok side of there a nice kind of trans or kind of off-white sole which i mentioned previously which again I, I love how brands are kind of trying to bring back these old school vintage shoes or you know 80s 70s whatever runners that they or technical workout shoes they make back in the day and still trying to reiterate them in the same kind of color scheme so that's basically why we want them when you saw when we used to find old school vintage scans of shoes online at forums that's the thing that really grabbed our attention was how flat this was how um flat kind of parallel to the floor the silhouette was right a really nice flat silhouette now this kind of banana foot nonsense that you get with modern shoes uh really clean colors and really nice application of color of color right distribution colorways are really good back in the day as opposed to now they just you know they just kind of put them into a randomizer and splash whatever colors they want on top of them but they reissued them in this kind of original colorway. Um, I didn't really see too much fanfare. Again, this is my own recognition. I'm not sure if this is actually true, but I do remember it going this way. It, these these originally come out, and then to kind of burst, boost the, the interest again, because I don't think these really hit as well as they could, they decided to um, collaborate with Jound, right? Um, from obviously um, 
Justin Sordon from the very popular or influential mood board, uh, Jound. And again, I thought this was a genius collaboration because if you know anything about Jound or Justin Sordon, this is a very minimalistic approach to design and aesthetics. Um, he's done collaborations, I think, with New Balance or a New Balance type shoe down previously that has the same sort of kind of look towards it. There are pictures I think he posted back in the day of um, Steve Jobs wearing those kind of Apple um, workout kind of, they kind of look similar to the, to this, to, to these kind of models, right? Um, uh, to Reebok C. They're sort of like an, a workout shoe. I don't know what they were, but there was an Apple trainer that came out back in the day that they kind of, you know, a lot of kind of those kind of design people used to see as a kind of, um, you know, used to put them up on a, on a plimp. So he decided to take inspiration from that shoe and reapply it into his Reebok C model. And again, done really well, tumbled leather, all white, um, great accents, just really classic and sleek design with John written on the inside. And these sold out really well. They had a pop-up shop in Montreal that was kind of, you know, harkened back to the old school days of sportswear shops and um, loads of magazines and stuff were sold there too. So it did really, really well. And again, these kind of sold amazingly well, right? So they kind of, in my experience, I think that they launched them first um, in this sort of model, right? You got this model first from them. Let's scroll that bit. Um, that didn't really maybe hit as well as they kind of helped it would have, right? The kind of OG vintage shoe. Then they decided to launch with an influencer who was very influential in that space who kind of has a lot of, you know, cachet with a lot of that kind of customer. And then they decided to then do an influencer um, campaign in New York City to launch it again, which I thought, again, very, very clever way of kind of doing marketing overall. Um, so they relaunched it again in New York City. Um, I'm, I guess it's just a standard sort of thing. Uh, the footwear brand invited attendees to join the club and not to the classic iconic sneaker in this latest campaign, which started a new class of creative, blah, blah. Photographer and ambassador for aesthetics, Adriana Raquel. Really? Okay, that's awesome. It's a good title to rebook, isn't it? Stylist and secretary of style, Taylor Okata. That's awesome. Music and VIP of vibes, Nick Hakim. All outfitted in the latest rebook fits. Okay, that's pretty cool. So they've got a, a little crew of people that are kind of trying to push it out, right? Um... Set, uh, set inside Lil's um, Victorian establishment, the event turned a typical country club aesthetic to its head with a set by DJ Ryan Trinidad, themed cocktails, Polaroid portrait, standard kind of influencer marketing campaign. But again, I like the rollout. The the, the event itself is a bit, you know, meh because it's a standard thing. You've got DJs, influencers, you know, drinks, whatever it may be. But I like the fact that it was put out as a GR, didn't really hit as well as it could, went back to, because they really trusted the model. Thing. No, there's some, definitely something into this. Launched it with Justin Saunders at Jound. That really hit and went viral. Then came out again with this event and then kind of, you know, kind of carried it around again. So again, really long-term thinking about the whole model. But it looks looks pretty cool. I think a lot of people are going to start wearing this. I think overall, this tracks so it again. Like, Reebok, they should really do stuff. I don't know. Would I think a Reebok concept space such as this, right? Like in, similar to 1948 that sold this sort of stuff, like this tracks with this girl's wearing, sort of like, you know, harkens back to... Do you remember the old school chili top? Do you remember that chili top? Uh, Chili from the World Cup, the Reebok top that I love that Marcelo Salas used to wear back in the day. My favorite, right? This top here, Marcelo Salas uh, Chili, right? Reebok, right? Do you remember this? Like in the World Cup back in the day, he looked fucking stunning. This this is one of my favorite kits of all time. Um, I'll get up on here on the screen. Do you remember this kit? If Reebok relaunched, uh, re were able to redo, relaunch or we're able to open a kind of concept store that sold archive pieces back in the day. This is something I'd buy in a heartbeat, right? They relaunched all the old school Reebok tops they did in football. Look at that. Look how fucking good that looks. Red and white with a sort of Reebok swish on the top of it. That looks fucking stunning, doesn't it, right? So stuff like that will look really, really great. Um, again, let's go back to the Reebok thing. So yeah, you got this. I think that will work really cool. But again, what do I know? Uh, so you got the Reebok event here. Loads of trendy influencers doing their influencer thing, which you know. Is the thing got a full orchestra here playing music? Everyone decked out in the Reeboks, of course, as per usual. A big cue. Oh, no, I like the little edit there. See, again, I've, I remember seeing those that dropped this fucking horribly. People don't. Why do people lace up their trainers, man? Lace them up properly. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. But again, what do I know? Again, cool event so far. Um, but by, by looks of it, I like that little tote bag, so it looks pretty nice. Um, again, I like to see people wearing these more often. Again, it's not, not the hype shoe of the century. It's not something you see influencers wearing, but again, I say, like I say all the time, like, if you really want to cultivate your own style, you really have to kind of earmark shoes and apparel that uh, you kind of can make your own or kind of fit your overall aesthetic, and then kind of just lean into it and keep buying it, photograph yourself, put it up on social media, those kind of things, just put your stamp on it, and then kind of dictate trends that way, as opposed to just buying into what everyone else is buying into and just wearing those things again and again and again, like, you know. For instance, with me and these Wave Runners or these 700s, I fucking love them, right? I've been wearing them every single day, beating them into the ground, not because they're trendy or because they're cool, just because it's my favorite shoe, really. And you know, it suits my kind of aesthetic and what I kind of wear. They're big, they're clunky. 
and they kind of go with most of everything that I'm wearing. So I think people used to do that more often than just wearing because nowadays people are just wearing stuff because it's just the wear. You know, like they just wear stuff because it's the it's the brand as opposed to it fitting into an outfit, which is annoying. But you know, everyone's got their thing, I guess. But anyway, um, this Reebok C event from in New York looked really cool. Um, I love the titles they gave to all the influencers. You know what they call them here, ambassador aesthetics. I quite like that. Imagine having that in your business cards. That's pretty cool. Um, uh, and secretary style and music and VIP of vibes. That's pretty nice as well. So yeah, definitely recommend you check it out. <laughs> Look at the back. They've got a kid here wearing MX 98s. Oh, no, no, no. And Air Force One's here. Naughty, naughty. Oh no, the, the, that's an attendee. Okay, I thought somebody in the, in the actual musician group. Probably not. Cool. But good to see you regardless. Um, Reebok really doing the good thing there, how they're marketing it. Really cool approach. Um, I'm hopefully, hopefully the Reebok C picks up. Because again, like I said, I'm not really a fan of Reebok, but I really love that model. I think it's a really underrated model. I think it's really versatile that goes with most outfits and kind of, again, can really traverse different sort of scenes and cultural uh, touch points. So definitely recommend you check that out if you're that way inclined.